Developers are writing 76% more code than they were at the beginning of last year. Workers with AI skills are earning 56% higher wages than those without those skills. And here's the part that nobody wants to talk about. AI hasn't killed jobs like everyone predicted. In fact, jobs are growing even in the most auto uh, automatable roles. After tracking the industry all year, I'm going to break down exactly what happened in 2025, the winners, the losers, and what this actually means for your career as we launch into 2026. This is We're going to go over all of this and talk about what you should be ready for in 2026. Let's go into it. Welcome to Startup Hack. I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Hack, we love to build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years of software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right, so 2025 was supposed to be the year AI took everyone's job, right? But instead, it became the year that AI made more workers more valuable, more productive, and better paid. So let me show you what the data actually shows. And trust me, it's not exactly what you're hearing from all the doomsday social media folks. So let's jump over to our other screen here. So this is a letter from A16Z, and I've you know read from these before. So uh, these are great you know publications. I'm a big fan here. So uh, monthly web users across major LLM assistants, right? So you're seeing that more people are using LLMs, and then ChatGPT Gemini and Gemini year over year growth, right? So we can see that ChatGPT pretty much has gone stagnant and or dropped over the year over year, right? So pretty stagnant. Whereas Gemini, we saw had a huge rise and then drop and then come right back up, right? So we saw a huge jump in Gemini toward the end of the year where it's definitely overtaking, um, you know, OpenAI. Now, and that's not a big thing, right? Google's come a long way since the days of Bard. The company has a massive 2025 and both new models and new products. Unlike OpenAI, Google creates more surface area for new products. The company launches models within Gemini and other access points. So on other fronts, Google won the consumer uh, Zydegist with Nano Banana and Nano Banana Pro. Per Google VP Josh Woodward, in the first week, Nano Banana saw 200 million images generated and brought 10 million new users to Gemini. While site less viral in the terms of sheer usage, Google Vio 3 video model was arguably the breakthrough moment for AI video in com combining visual and audio. Now, they're also talking about WebML, which has been really popular and a lot of other tools, and Google's starting to really build it into everything. Now, Anthropic remains very focused on the prosumer user with, and within that, the technical user. Almost all of their consumer-facing launches were within Claude or extending Claude, uh, so Claude Chrome, Claude Desktop, etc. Uh, we have Perplexity similarly doubled down on the prosumer user this year with a focus on less technical productivity hacker. Their biggest launches were Comet, arguably the first true AI browser and email assistant. Now, here you'll hear me talk a lot about AI browsers. Not a big fan. I don't like they're just way too insecure. Uh, XAI Grok has become a long way this year. In January, XAI launched Grok as a standalone app. Before, it was only available in X. In July, they made waves with the launch of Companions. Uh, until that point, most AI companions were just voices. Grok changed the game with a fully animated character. In August, they shipped uh, own image and video models. <clears throat> now, according to Sensor Tower, Grok went from zero users to the, at the beginning of this year to 9.0 million users, uh, <clears throat> which is daily active users, and 38 million monthly active users as of mid-December. Now, Meta, it's been very rocky. The company launched a standalone app called Meta AI in April, tended to place chat within your AI assistant, but app went viral in June when most people discovered that older users were actually sharing their conversations with a chatbot on the main discovery feed. Very nice, right? So they got the wrong kind of press here that you want to see. So that's kind of a good rundown on all of these. Now, I like this this post here. It says, well, you're not paid to code. You're paid to solve business problems with code. That's a big difference. And, and I'm going to go into this one too. Uh, this guy says, Claude code is insane. And Elon thought this was funny. I know literally nothing about coding, zero. And I just built a fully functional web app in minutes. And he gives you a local host, right? Check it out. And Elon laughs, right? Point here is back to this, right? You're not paid to code. You're paid to solve business problems with code. And that's a big difference. And that's what we're seeing here, right? The computers can start to write code for you and it could be as nice as it wants. But until you know how to deploy it, until you know how to manage it, until you know how to maintain it, until you know how to edit it, until you know how to like, it's not going to do you a whole lot of good just to write code faster. So we're definitely seeing code productivity tools increase. And that, and that's a good thing, right? That's that's great. So PRs are getting bigger. This is good and bad, right? Because the median PR size increased 33% from March to November. Now, 
part of me as a, as a manager, you know, is a little concerned about this because large PRs is, are difficult to manage, right? This one's lines of code per developer grew from 4,400 to 7,800 as AI tools act as a force multiplier. And that I actually agree with, right? So it's kind of like autocomplete on steroids and it, and it really is. So we should definitely be using it, but it's not going to replace developers. Now, medium teams, six to 15 increase output from 7,000, 13,000 line per developer. Now, again, my favorite commits are the ones where people are deleting code. So not always sure that more code is better, but you know, you could argue that this is, you know, productivity swings. Median lines change uh, per file grew from 18 to 22 as PRs uh, become denser, right? Now let's talk about some of the adoptions here. Um, so AI SDK growth, Anthropic SDK leads at 40, 4 point, uh, 43 million. So they had an 8x growth over the year. Vercel was next. Um, and you can see some of the rest with OpenAI agents pretty low here. Uh, Light LM grew four times to 41 million. So this is a huge jump, right? Um, <clears throat> see, look, some of these other ones here. So OpenAI had some huge growth. Anthropic had huge growth. Google had huge growth all, you know, toward the tail end of the, uh, you know, into 2025 as we move on. <clears throat> Now it says OpenAI leads, uh, so this LM provider SDK downloads. So Anthropic grew 1.5 uh, times. Uh, so Google, or sorry, OpenAI has the largest number, but Anthropic had one of the largest growth and Google's at th uh, 13 million for open source models. Now there's a lot of these that we can definitely continue to go through, tons of different reports. You can definitely find these reports out there as well. I don't often uh, link a lot of these reports just because like we're moving through these really fast. And a lot of this is my analysis of the report. So according to Greptide State of AI Coding Report, developers output increased 76% from March to November of 2025. That's lines of code per developer growing from 4,400 to 7,800. Pull request size jumped 33% during the same period. And again, this is one of these where I'm seeing, you know, an increased number of bugs. And this is part of the reason why we're seeing an increased number of bugs. So developers need to make sure that they're watching those PRs really closely. Median sized teams uh, grew, teams from six to 15 developers saw the biggest gains with output increase of 89%. Lines change per file of 20% as developers tackle denser, more complex changes with AI. Now, in my years of building software, I haven't ever seen productivity gains quite this fast. So we're starting to see a, exactly what I've been predicting all along, that developers can use these tools to become more productive faster. Now, Google's Gemini is a, at about 34% of ChatGPT scale on web and about 40% on mobile. But here's the thing, Gemini grew 155% year over year, while ChatGPT only grew 23%. Only 9% of consumers pay for more than one AI subscription across ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, and Cursor, according to uh, research. Now, Grok went from literally zero standalone users to the beginning of the year to 38 million. So they had a huge jump. So the biggest thing that we're seeing across the board is that people, uh, the larger number of people who weren't using uh, AI tools at the beginning of the year, by the end of the year, we're using these. Now, PricewaterhouseCooper analyzed nearly a billion job ads across six continents and found that workers with AI skills commanded 56% wage premiums. That's more than double the 25% premium from last year. In wholesale and retail, the premium hits 125% and in energy, it's around 105%. Industries most exposed to AI are seeing three times higher revenue per employee growth than industries that can't use AI effectively. So productivity growth nearly quadrupled in AI exposed industries going from 7% to 27% since 2022. So the skills required for AI exposed jobs are changing 66% faster on other roles up from 25% last year. So the short of this is if you're not learning AI skills right now, you're literally leaving money on the table and it's going to leave you behind. So contrary to all the doom and gloom predictions, and I know a lot of people thought I was doom and gloom. I'm an AI realist. I've been saying all the time, we weren't going to hit AGI. It wasn't going to replace developers. But job numbers are actually growing even in the most automatable roles, according to PricewaterhouseCoopers research. Between 2019 and 2024, jobs in AI-exposed occupations grew 38%, while lower exposure jobs grew 65%. So both were growing. 
the key difference is augmentation versus automation. Jobs where AI helps humans do better work are growing faster than jobs where AI just does the work. So Stanford research found a 20% employment drop for young programmers, but, but old workers and those using AI to augment their work actually saw job gains. Now, the thing about this is we're going to see a shift here because they can't just hire old developers forever. We have to continue to build our entry level positions. So the entry level positions that are getting squeezed now uh, will continue to like there, there's going to be a role for them that's coming. So this matches exactly what I've been saying all along. We're starting to see the middle, middle hollow out a little bit. So like those who can learn how to use AI, program using AI, build on AI are going to be the winners who will win with AI. And again, we're going to talk a little bit about where I see the AI going. Now, a lot of the benchmarks show that Anthropic's models return the first token in under 2.5 seconds, while OpenAI takes more than twice that long at over five seconds. So, but OpenAI wins on throughput. GPT-5 Codex would deliver 62 po tokens per second on the same uh, benchmarks versus Claude's 19 tokens per second. So there's a lot of different benchmarks out there, and there's a lot of things we can see at the end of the year. And I think we're going to continue to see this leapfrogging, where we see the leaders just leapfrog and continue to beat each other by small percentage every year. The challenge here is that it's taking massive amounts of training and computation, uh, you know, GPU load and huge data centers, so 100x to gain just a couple percent. And that's what we're going to see over and over. So we're definitely seeing scale hitting its limits. Now, Google went from the BART embarrassment to becoming the company with some of the biggest viral moments of the year. They released Nano Banana, Vio3, Gemini Pro, Notebook LM, and a host of all other things that they've built into their platforms. So Google has the distribution advantage with their existing products. And so that's, and so ChatGPT is really diving into, you know, search, but Google is going to build this into their products, which everybody's still using. Now, PricewaterhouseCooper found that employer demand for degrees is declining for all jobs, but especially fast for AI-exposed roles. The percentage of AI-augmented jobs required degrees fell 7%, um, 7 point percentage points from 66% to 59% between 2019 and 2024. For AI-automatable jobs, it dropped 9 points. So companies like IBM, Google, Apple are moving skill-based hiring focus what you can actually do more than where you went to school. Now, this matches what I've been saying for years. Your portfolio and your skills and your ability to solve problems matters far more than your diploma. If you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on a degree when you could be building skills and shipping projects, in my opinion, you're playing the wrong game. Now, according to A16Z, uh, consumer AI startups are hitting revenue milestones faster than any previous generation of tech companies. Cursor reported $100 million in revenue in its first year. That's unheard of for a developer tool. Lovable hit $50 million in revenue in just six months. The median enterprise AI company in A16Z's data reached more than $2 million in AR in just one year, while median consumer companies hit $4.2 million. So what used to be considered best in class, 0 to 1 million AR is now the lower end of what AI companies are achieving. So OpenAI launched apps to let third-party developers, but these kind of really fizzled. But a lot of other things gained in 2025. So one in seven pull requests now involves an AI agent, according to research analyzing 40 million PRs. AI participation in code review grew from under 1% in 2022 to over 14%. That's a structural shift in how code's getting reviewed. GitHub Copilot led organizational adoption, but CodeRabbit led by, to led by total PR volume. So... Overall, if your team isn't using AI code reviews yet, you're leaving quality and speed on the table. So AI isn't replacing workers. It's making workers who use AI dramatically more valuable than those who don't. The wage premium for AI skills doubled in one year from 25 to 56 percent. There's no reason to stop no re to think this is going to stop. Entry level jobs are getting squeezed while experienced workers who augment with AI are thriving. The barbell effect is real. Consumer AI platforms are maturing into ecosystems with app stores, integrations and developer communities. Developer productivity gains of 76 percent or more will become the new baseline. Terms that don't uh, teams that don't adopt AI tools are going to fall behind really quickly. So the question isn't whether AI impact will impact your job. It's whether you'll be winning on the side of the impact. Now, as everybody knows on here, I'm an AI realist. We're seeing tools because we're seeing this start to niche down. We didn't see AGI. 
not a big surprise to me, nor anybody who's been listening to the channel, but we are seeing AI develop tools that are coming into the workplace and becoming very useful. And here at Startup Hack, we love to build those custom tools for companies. We specialize in building out SaaS plus AI, and that is really where our specialty is. So if you need help with your t with a team or with some of these tools, reach out because we'd love to help and here's some great information about our services and check out startuphack.com. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As your fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect. Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuphack.com.